Game of Thrones, episode seven, season four, four, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it uh, called uh, Mockingbird. You brought your own wolf. Mockingbird. Mockingbird, and I brought my own uh, dire wolf, yeah. who Matt is allergic to. Yes, this would uh, be Shaggy Dog. So hence Matt's uh, apprehension. It's not a fear of dogs. No. It's an allergy to dogs. It's a though. fear of sneezing all over everything. <laughs> right, it's yeah. a fear of sneezing. Uh, this is Bob. Bob is not as sort of reliable as say, uh, ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. First of all, I mean, could I have called that scene more? You called uh, basically I, every part of those scenes up at the, yeah, the iRace. Just nail it, I called, he can destroy the castle, I'm like he's gonna destroy that castle. <laughs> and then as soon as, uh, he's like, I've only loved, I, you know, before we move well before that, I'm like, your sister. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I, n rarely Poor is Lisa. a show. Poor Lysa, right? Like, yeah. she's all yeah. ready, she's gonna push her in, she's gonna push in Santa. It's like, if you're gonna push someone in the hole, push him in the hole. But don't stand there dawdling so that the other guy can come yeah. in and push you in the hole. <laughs> don't stand well, there Well, the thing dawdling. is, like, we've seen that she's, she is a killer, technically, but she did release her. Maybe she, it's just because she trusted him, and that's usually a bad decision to trust yeah, him. Trusting, but. Uh, trusting the mayor of Baltimore is never, uh, is never <laughs> a wise decision. But, but, like, Game of Thrones satisfies in the death of people. Like, I mean, I don't care about, I don't, I don't, there's no, I have no sympathy for Liza. I have no uh -huh. sympathy for Robin. I'm glad she's dead. The world is a right. safer place. Innocent people yeah. are safer Well, that building is definitely dead. safer. That building is definitely Especially since there are apparently only about three people in it. Well, See, we haven't gotten much of Lysa, but she's clearly bananas. She's bananas. Yeah. And so you have that moment where when he's saying, I've only loved one woman, and she's like, oh, it's me. And, you know, and, and, and the casting, like, <laughs> like she's ugly, right? Well, I mean, I mean, she's made to look ugly. She looks like she could be Catelyn Stark's less attractive, crazier right. sister. But they don't like. She's not beautiful, so it's easy. Well, they, they obviously play it up with the makeup and totally. The I don't know. The yeah. actress may be stunning, but they deliberately make us yes. believe that she's not attractive. And that whole thing up there was was pretty predictable. I mean, the the fact that when they kiss, you know that she's going to be yeah, watching totally, and everything. I, I that. How um, long has Peter Baelish been waiting to say to Liza? I've only loved one woman. Yeah. Your sister. And it was your sister. Oh, totally. well, actually, well, that brings up a good question, though. So he obviously at least is saying that he's driven by love, and he reveals the motive for killing um, Joffrey. And it's not just that he thinks that Joffrey is too unpredictable or anything like that. He seems to imply that the reason he did it is revenge for the killing of Catelyn Stark. Oh, he's Do you guys? Full of shit. Yeah, sure. He started the whole process by he told her to make up to poison uh, John Aaron. Yeah. And then that got Ned killed, which got Catelyn killed, which is why we're here. I mean, he did it. Yeah, and yeah. actually, it's not as if Joffrey was the one who communicated with, uh, with the twins and, and set up the Red Wedding. That was Tywin. Right. Um, right. So, um, so you think he's lying there? I, I think he uh, may have convinced himself that that justifies some of what he did. I think he clearly, he says it enough. I believe that he loved Catelyn. Uh, that seems true. Right, but I but, think the way Baelish is now, like, he's, he's a guy who says hello and he's lying. Yeah, totally. Right? I mean, he can't, I don't think he's capable of telling the truth about anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, at, or at least as viewers, we shouldn't believe a thing that comes out no, of his mouth. I don't think, no right. one believes it. I don't think anybody believes right. that. I mean, it's partly true. He did love Catelyn. It's proud, given who he is, it's probably the only person he's ever cared about, right? Yeah. Because he's an instinctively sort of uh, selfish and mostly massively opportunistic, regardless yeah. of the consequence to anybody else. So no, I don't. I don't. Uh, of of course, he's his motivation for killing Joffrey could be what it only is for everybody. Whether it's that moment where he was with Varys and looking at the throne, and he actually thinks there's a way he could get it himself, or it's just power. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's maybe he can't aspire beyond Winterfell. What would this be? Well, Winterfell is nothing now. So. Well, it's, it was burned, but most right, of it right. is stone. I mean, I assume it's somewhat it salvageable. But it could be rebuilt. Yeah. Would, 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 would being the where he is now in the Erie, would being the man of the Erie, mm -hmm. Lord uh, of the Vale, Lord, isn't I thought Robin? Right now, Robin is the Lord yeah. of the Vale. Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. So the right. but but like the whatever the acting Lord of the Vale, the the husband running that place, Lord Protector, Lord probably. Pro is that a better gig than a up and running Winterfell? Well, or Winterfell is far, far larger. It has a much larger population, could probably field a bigger army. But in terms of the climate, certainly, right. the, the Vale is nicer. Um, it's been, it's been it's basically of, the only area that's completely untouched by the war so far. But it seems also, but it seems a little set apart. Like, it seems a little like... Yeah, it's remote. Like Fairbanks. Like, great, you're in charge of Alaska, but... <laughs> but it's remote, and it doesn't seem like a part of the Seven Kingdoms that... Yeah, um, the North is somewhat like that 
also, as well. Right. But much, it's a much smaller, the veil is much smaller. So I don't know, we don't know what his motivation is, but it's power. Whatever yeah. it is, it's well, power, right? So quick follow-up, so when he's talking with Sansa, he says, you know, you're far more beautiful than she was. He says he's only ever loved Catelyn. What do you think he's thinking vis-a-vis -vis Sansa? He hasn't forced himself on her or anything like that, but he did just kill someone who threatened her. Well, I don't know. He did kiss her. He right? did, did kiss her. He did kiss her. I, look, like, I think you have to look back to what, you know, Baelish has that great speech in last season where he talks about climbing the ladder mm -hmm. and, and making the most of chaos. And I think that, you know, you have to look at him. And here's a guy, I mean, it could be just that he's stirring things up just because he knows that he can capitalize on it. Mm. So he'll be someone to destabilize and cause chaos until because he gets until satisfied. He, until he gets satisfied. Um, that it, look, that it may be that simple. I feel like there's probably a specific plan mm. that he has, um, but I, I guess he didn't. It's tempting to think that he planned this, but she could have obviously she could have spoken to Sansa for thirty fewer seconds and then thrown her out the yeah, moon before roof. he came into the room. Before he came into the room, so it was a that yeah. was a foolish plan. So did he kiss her knowing that she was looking? I mean, it's a little stupid to kiss her in the courtyard. There's like, there's only four people who live there. Right? You know, I mean, it's like, it's not. It's, it's got to be a butler it's, somewhere. It's, it's right in the, like, is there a pantry you could sort of push her into? For the, <laughs> the broom um, closet. Right, but he kisses the her right of the in the castle. open, right, exactly, in the middle of the castle. What do you know? She was looking. It was yeah. such a Downton Abbey. I know you guys don't watch Downton Abbey, but Downton Abbey, <laughs> no, you do, but the whole show in Downton Abbey is driven by people overhearing other people's conversations. Literally, if, if that didn't happen, if they had, if the acoustics of Downton Abbey were worse, uh, there would be no show. <laughs> it would just be people, rich people, getting food from poor people. That would be the entire show. Um, and so that was a totally great Downton Abbey moment. Oh, she saw yeah. it, and you knew she did. And then, and then she was prepared to throw out the moon roof. And and so I don't know what his motivation is, but but not the moon roof, the moon door. The moon, the moon door, door. Sorry. Not know, out of the we've top been of waiting car. for someone to be <laughs> thrown out. Out of the top of the Suzu Trooper. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been waiting for somebody to go, and you didn't think it would be it would be she. It's, it's, so, it's, it's the old rule. It, it's Chekhov's moon roof, right? You don't what? show the moon roof at the beginning of the season. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. So right, when know. when Sansa was being put, look at, look down at, look down at, did you think that she might get thrown out? Because it's Game of Thrones, of course. I mean, we we were just talking about how or earlier while we were watching the show, I was saying, you know, you guys have read the book, so you know, anyone who's watching Game of Thrones knows, you anyone, no one is safe. Yeah, that right. you could be. They killed. They, they killed Sean Even Bean. Even those of us who are reading the books, like nobody's safe. Right. right? Nobody, yeah. I, so could and, Sansa and have been thrown out? Been but, changed. But, but with and and Peter Dinklage is is the sort of the now most. He's sort of the face of the show, and that. But it was Sean Bean in the first season, and if and yeah, if, the whole first season. And could could now Prince Oberlin, um, I know his name. Um, uh, <laughs> could could uh, uh, see, but it's a small liberal arts school that, that that shuns violence, so it's funny. <laughs> um, so uh, could Oberon lose, and could Tyrion be quickly and suddenly beheaded, or meet his end in some other way in the next episode? Well, yeah, let's bear in mind these uh, episode nines have been generally. pretty turbulent. Although they mixed it up this year because they dropped the hammer in episode two exactly. this season with, the, with yeah. the wedding. But do you really think that they'll go the whole end of the season without something big? No, of course. So theoretically, something like right. that could happen, yes, or something could equally be, good. But it could be the it could be the the the, the death of the mountain and and Jamie saying to Cersei, you know what? I fucking hate you. Um, and uh, I found out there are these whorehouses. You can I, have sex with anybody. I'm gonna go with uh, my friend, uh, my brother Tyrion, and we're gonna go cause a lot of havoc. Yeah, and a lot of it'll fun. be a buddy comedy. Yeah, right, totally. And then exactly. Bron, bring Bron. <laughs> right, right the bring, Slayer brothers. Right, totally. That's right. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, but you don't know. Anybody could go. So, I did think Sansa might go. I, I definitely, for a brief moment, yeah. I thought so. But then, as soon as he came in the room, I thought, oh, he's gonna get her to stop, and then. He, I'm yeah. just gonna push her, um, but that like like whatever. That's just from watching a lot of television. Yeah, like you know, it's just and and it's fun to. It's all right. It's still it didn't make it any less fun. So we got Hot Pie back. Yes. Um, I didn't remember his name, but that yeah. is his name. Wait, Hot one pie. one final note oh, yeah, on that. Yeah, it would yeah. be great if the the first shot of the next episode is them panning over the rocks below, and you just see her head with all of her hairs in place <laughs> and the blue eyes looking up. <laughs> 
we may get it. Well, it may yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was, uh, we don't spend a lot of time talking about the coming, because they mean nothing, so I, I don't worry about talking they're about They're made them. to deceive, they're, too. They're literally made to deceive, and they suggest in the coming attractions that Sansa's going to, what, tell the truth, and, and that's going to be the end of Baelish. Again, it's Game of Thrones, maybe, maybe. but I can't imagine yeah. that she feels duty-bound to tell the truth to the guy who's now saved her life twice. Yeah. Uh, that seems... Um, huh. Go ahead and lie for that guy. Yeah, maybe be, she's learning. Yeah, um, well, she is, right? Because we saw her kind of lying to, to Lysa, right? Like she was playing up how stupid everybody thinks she is. Right. So yeah. that was a great lie. That was. Right? We had a big debate. You weren't here that week because uh, Anna, who did a very good Sansa impersonation. No, I was here. Oh, you were for that yeah, one. Oh, okay, I was sorry. Here. Well, you weren't here last week, but but yeah, <laughs> but I was impressed by. Uh, uh, well, you didn't make an impression. I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, but I. So I liked that. I'm with you that that was a quality lie. Yeah. Um, Okay, so hot pie, the return, just hot. as hot as he was back in the day. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that was good, and that, like, I'm dying for the, I want someone to have a reunion. Yeah. You know, like, we were, we were, we were, like, we 15 so yards with, with uh, Brandon, Brandon and, John. And, uh, and, uh, and John, right. But that was deprived, and, and John and Rob was deprived, and everyone and Rob was deprived. Right. You know, and we keep thinking that, Something nice is going to happen, yeah. and then it, Not it, so much. and then it, no, it it doesn't. Yeah. Although now, but so it looks like this one might actually happen. Yeah, and we've got multiple people who know who might be there headed there. Um, I wonder if there'll be some symmetry, and somehow, the mountain and the hound will be killed simultaneously on the show, hundreds or thousands of miles apart. Hmm. Like that would be a. That would be a narratively it, interesting bad. thing to happen. It's too bad the Hound couldn't make it back to King's Landing in time to pledge himself as the champion. Or will when, when let's assume for a second that, that, that Prince Oberlin kills, um, uh, kills the Oberlin. Mountain. <laughs> right, Oberlin, right. I know. Um, Prince, Merlin Olsen. Right, the Prince, Prince Oberlin Olsen. kills the Mountain. Mm -hmm. Like, either the Hound is in some fight and he's killed, maybe by Arya, although now that seems crazy. She did, she, he is on the list. Yeah. But he just, she stitched the neck. That doesn't seem right. Um, uh, but maybe he dies in some battle. Maybe he dies, he, like one guy dies trying to uh, kill someone who needs assistance. And maybe the hound dies protecting Arya yeah. in some confrontation. Some symmetry there, yeah. But there would be a moment like when the brother's head go, like does he, do they have like a, I know they're not twins, but is there like a connection? Like will he be like. He knows. Like does he know? <laughs> he sniffs the air because he's the hound. The Westeros right? version right. of the Corsican brothers. The mountain has fallen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I I like the the hot pie part because uh, it seems like we've lost some of our avenues for comic relief in the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems like Brienne and Podrick are okay. We're gonna have a couple minutes. They're gonna be a little bit lighter. Right. You know, nobody's privates are gonna be cut off or anything like that. Um, and so I like that. He, I'm glad that he's not going to be in many episodes because he's a bit of a talker. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was great to see again the Stark wolf. Like that was a nice throwback to that very sweet moment right. from earlier but, on. But Brienne and uh, Podrick, like that kind of is the buddy cop adventure, right? Yeah. Like they're mismatched. Mm -hmm. Right, like they know, hated each other. She's right. starting. They're starting to talk. Right. She's starting to see his charms. He's really. Right. They he still wants, snipe at each yeah. other. Right. He's he's. <laughs> Good thing I kept my mouth shut. Right. He's Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. She's Ice T. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, not Ice T. Ice, ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, uh, <laughs> the uh, I didn't see it. Okay. I just know it from the, I just know it from <laughs> our review. But he did give us that great line. You can't give up on the gravy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everybody makes that mistake, and you can't give up on the gravy. I went to Thanksgiving uh, once with an old girlfriend's family, and they didn't have gravy. Wow. And maintained throughout the evening that gravy wasn't, wasn't necessary. Yeah. Now there's yeah. turkey. A right. common misconception. Oh, obviously. Yeah. So, no, obviously, this, worst so Thanksgiving just, meal I ever had. So it was just turkey dinner. It was a turkey dinner, like, and with mashed potatoes with no gravy. Yeah. Right. Huh. And, and by the way, uh, so for the people who haven't read the books, this is something I can talk about without spoiling anything. The, the big discussion about kidney pie and gravy, the obsession over the eating the lemon cakes from like an episode ago, and how much they loved the rabbit stew, those may seem like random comic moments. But, but they're uh, in the books? Uh, not exactly, but the books, that author is obsessed with yeah, food. There will be a page yeah, about food. Yeah. Oh, he's, right? yeah, George R. R. Martin is a food guy. He's, he's a foodie. the foodie. And yeah. so he devotes a Paragraphs. lot of time describing the foods people are eating. Yeah, and that's and, a big and, part and, of it. And, and beef that, juice pouring yeah. down their beards. Yeah, and, I mean, he uses it, he, he does use it as a tool to kind of describe characters, but he also uses it to kind of define characters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it, Sansa's 
loving the lemon cakes. Like that's that's part of who she is. And like innocence. In, in, right, and yeah. innocence. And but yeah, he goes into food a lot. Yeah. Right? And so finally, we're getting a bit of that. Uh, I like that. That's good. Um, and. Uh, uh, right, and of course we've gotten funny food stuff too. All, everybody on the road has funny food stories, because Aria and the Hound have had funny food stories. Yeah, with the chicken and the rabbit stew. Oh, yeah, the, the chicken yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so well, that, that guy tries to eat the Hound. Right, that's true. <laughs> he almost became a funny food story. Yeah. But obviously, there are bonding moment between Aria and the Hound. You mm -hmm. know, uh, his injury, and then he tell he opens up to her. He tells her to shut up, but he obviously doesn't want her to shut up. He wants to tell her. And so they're like, you know, and then and then you forget, like she has no family, she has no father, like like she's, you know, she's super tough. But there's a, you know, this incredibly he could be he could more this guy who killed her friend, and she will avenge his death. Yeah. But she, there's a definite. Father We've seen her turn stone cold though, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, the hound knifes the one guy to put him out of his misery, it's and there's no thing. reaction from her. Right, right, right And then there. the minute, she, like all she's waiting for is to learn that dude's name, and then just gets him right in the heart. Yeah, yeah. like which, so quickly, yeah. yeah. Which I thought would be a trap, I mean you have her sort of being mocked by him last episode, him showing that, you know, your little blade isn't enough if they have armor. This guy didn't have armor, and she, she learned the lesson, used it three minutes later where the heart is, and she put him down, just, a, just took a little bit of blade. Yeah. Um, and so every time we see them, there's a little bit of them growing a little bit closer together and a little bit of her growing farther apart from the humanity she had in her previous life. Yeah, and so I'm totally curious when she has to make that call about him being on the list. Mm -hmm. I can't think she will. I mean, it may not come up because I feel like he's, he's, it, he's set up to die saving her. It's an you interesting know, dichotomy know, though, right? Like up, they, she starts out having quite a bit of humanity, let's call it, and he's got none. He is a monster. Right. And yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're meeting, they're meeting and maybe even right? Meeting and, and that's not necessarily so good for her. Well, but, but to be fair, we've also, we know from when he was back in the capital, he always had that little protective streak of, on Sansa. Like he looked out for her right. when he was drunk and about to oh, flee right. the capital. Yeah, he he said he would take her. Yeah, I mean, um, he did. He's had this, he, he's, there is humanity in him, even though he yeah. hides it. He doesn't want anybody to see it. Yeah. Almost. But then he held, but then he has this incredibly revealing line. Not just did his brother uh, burn him. Like we already knew that, and we knew that that must have been traumatic. Not just because of the pain, but because your brother did it. But then the father's decision to protect the brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which mirrors, you know, Tywin's deal with Jaime and with Tyrion. Right. That he right. cares more about the older brother. And and I, this this may be overlooking, and it may be it may be, or I guess overanalyzing. It may be inaccurate. But I was told that this is the first scene we've ever had the Hound not wearing full armor, and it's where he bears his soul to, mm. to Arya. Mm. That might have been a conscious decision on the lets part of the director. Let's his guard down, lets his armor down. Exactly. Think about it. Um, <laughs> so, great scene um, in Marine between uh, Sir Jorah from Downton Abbey mm -hmm. um, and uh, Eric Bana. Who almost yeah. overheard something. Yeah. Who, <laughs> you don't want to talk about the Eric Bana, uh, Daenerys part first? No, it was just, but I mean, that sets it up, because the great moment, the best, but we didn't get. I mean, obviously they they did it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a bold move on her part. Well, she's the queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah but even it was, the queen needs some. Good to be the queen. Yeah, but it was <laughs> but it was like I'm sure that was super erotic, and Eric Ban is a handsome. Yeah, man. I hope that's a, a scene in the DVDs. Um, and uh, you mean an extended scene? Extended yeah, scene, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to see him from the front? Is that what you're saying? If it involves seeing her from the front, I'll make that uh, bargain. Yeah, he's 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 in, he's in fine in good shape. shape. Yeah, yeah, but and so that great moment afterwards where he's like the queen's in a good mood. That you know. is, oh god, that hurts just to watch because you feel for Jora, and he's a good guy, and he shows it a minute later. Um, but, but I think Jora also knows. Like I don't think, like I think Jora is in, in love with her, but I don't think. I, I feel like he. Like he's like I'm gonna be in love with her and I'm gonna die at some point in love with her. Now like, I wasn't not, here last not week. Unrecorded. Did you guys? How much did you guys talk about when the small council last week was talking about getting reports from Jora? I don't oh, know that we discussed it. In we, I don't think we did discuss it. It's a great point to bring up because we learned that Jora initially was sent there to spy on her, which I guess we, right. we and did. was spying on her for some time. Yeah, and then right. he just stopped filing. Right. <laughs> right. But she doesn't know that. Doesn't know that. Right. So, yeah, so she could learn at some point that he was spying, and he then has to be like, I was for a little bit. It's one of those things like, I started out spying on you, but then we really fell in love, yeah. and now this is real. Right. I um, was really just going to take you to prom as part of a dare, but right. now I love you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. She's so smart. Like, what I, what I wrote down, the note I took there is that she is the, uh, 
like she goes to that point. She didn't. We thought she'd learned a lesson because when she ordered all the, it was in Marine where she ordered all the masters. Killed, the hundred and sixty-three. Hundred sixty-three right. or not yeah. all, but the, and it was random. And I thought at the time, that's bullshit because they weren't all the same. Like there were probably one hundred and sixty-three bad masters, but you got to find them. You just got to. Uh, and she had that pointed out to her by the guy who came in, and but then she's prepared to do it again. She's prepared to send them out even to, worse to Yankton. To reference another uh, <laughs> HBO show, um, Yankee Town. Uh, yeah, uh, Yankton was in Deadwood. Um, I did not watch. Uh, Yung Kai. Yes, good memory. Fuck you. I'm sure the commenters um, will give you credit for that. Um, so that she then is prepared to send uh, to kill everybody at Yung Kai, and then he counsels her against it, and she listens. And that never happens on this show, except from the week. Like, Tommen mm -hmm. will obviously listen to mm -hmm. sound counsel and, and others who aren't, like, it's, ha but rare. See, but a she, little bit with Stannis, listening to. Stannis is not strong. Stannis is, it, Stannis literally blows with the wind. He's also crazy. Mm -hmm. She's a responsible, strong leader. Like, she makes tough decisions. And to see someone in a show who's strong and makes tough decisions also be like, that's fucking good advice. Yeah. I well, will accept it. it hmm. You know, it's That's interesting. Daenerys as a character is, you know, we do see her trying to lead, you know, and she may have ulterior motives about, like, you know, telling Jorah to go and say, oh, wait, no, no, say that you changed my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, she's smart enough. She's got to know that that does two things, right? A, it sets off the rivalry between him and the other guy, right? Which she probably wants. But it also, like, that cements Jorah to her, right? That really, you know, that as a ma you know, as a leader, she's, yes, I'm acknowledging that you did that for me, mm -hmm. and I want yeah. you to be able to tell others that you did that for me. Yeah. And that's key to his loyalty. I disagree with you on Stannis being weak. I, I disagree with you. I think Stannis is trying to do the right thing. I think he's twisted, and he's maybe getting bad advice and he's hooked up with the wrong person with Melisandre. But by the same token, the Onion Knight, his, his, Sir Davos, like he will listen to Davos. And I think that Stannis is being set up as another person yes. yeah. who's Stannis, got the potential Stannis, of being a good leader. But Stannis is influenced, but he's not, but he's, like she is a good and strong leader. I'll, I, they can amend it that way. At some point she becomes the only, she, Stannis is wildly illogical. He's listening to a crazy batshit person who's about to sacrifice his daughter uh, or we uh, maybe, um, yeah, but I don't think he knows that yet. He doesn't know that. He, he wasn't it's privy to that, that conversation. I mean, but, but I mean, I am. I, no, look, maybe he'll rise up in that moment if that happens and do the right thing. But that's a coin flip. I mean, if he's really, maybe. you know, if it's really another yeah. Lord of Light said to do it, yeah. uh, I, you know, then I, I don't know. I don't see St Stannis is so nuts that I can't see him as as mm. strong because uh, even though he. Even though he is the as rightful an heir as there is, and he has some justification for what he's doing, I mean, he's behaving like a crazy person. Yeah, it's hard to imagine him sitting in the throne. It's hard to yeah. imagine that that guy could, and, and, and also he has what, what I'm sure he has no interest. In, what she has an interest in, I mean, she is the ultimate anti-George Bush. As I'll bring politics in and totally alienate some people online. <laughs> That's a guy who had no interest in governing at mm -hmm. all. They didn't care about governing. They liked winning. And when they got there, they're like, okay, let's tear this down, let's tear this down, let's tear this down. She, I think, even though we got that moment last week where she's like, oh, I gotta hear all these 212 supplicants. Yeah. But, like, she, she wants to govern. There. She wants to set up yeah. a system. She wants to find, yeah. if somebody told her there's a program, a Meals on Wheels program that'll feed some of the children of the slaves, and this is how we can make it work, and then <laughs> we gotta tax these guys to do it. She'd be like, oh, Meals like, on wagon wheels. Right, let's get right, that, let's right. make that work. Let's get that implemented. And, and Dragons just to, on wagons. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and to add on to what you said about accomplishing two things with sending him there, it also shows that she has realized that just going from city to city destroying things, being this, this hard queen is not enough. You need to be more than that. And so she did two things in this episode that sort of humanized her. She had sex again, willingly, after her husband had died, you know, two seasons ago or three seasons ago. And also sending him there, like they began that conversation with her knowing that um, Jora knows they had sex and she was being very cold about it. She didn't care about what he thought about that. But then sending 
it shows that she acknowledges his feelings and cares about it. Like, she was showing she's a human, too. This is crazy because you guys have read the book, so you know. But I don't think, although maybe this is something that's subject to interpret. I think, to me, that she's giving Jorah exactly what he wants and that she's never going to sleep with that guy. Ever. There, there's, there's a couple other things I think he wants. Uh, yeah, but he, I think he knows it. I really do. And I think what he wants is to help her. Like, mm -hmm. he, in the old, the, the most traditional right. sense of he loves her and he believes in her and he will look out for her right. and he doesn't trust that guy. Right, her not loving yeah. him has not stopped him from loving yeah. her. Yeah, he will mm. continue to love her and he'll suspect that he probably thinks at some point she's gonna meet a nice guy, mm -hmm. right? And then I'll, <laughs> you know, and I'll rub my temples like Ed Harris in Apollo 13 and I'll <laughs> keep doing my job, yeah. you know? Um, but Maybe. Uh, but I, don't, I don't see him as, I don't see him, that he, I would be surprised if he ever like lightly brushed her blonde hair out of the way and said, you know, and kisses her in a snowy courtyard. Right, you're the one that I, I overheard want. what you were saying. <laughs> right, exactly. About yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you feel the same way. I know you feel the same way. He does the low, breathy, breathy talking really well. Yeah. Where, whereas uh, Lord Baelish, he's got sort the, of, he's biting off every word right, right. as he says it. There's like a hiss coming at the end yeah. of everything. Because um, he's a snake. Yeah. He'd be in Slytherin if we were in a different franchise. Great Tyrion uh, <laughs> Bronn scene. Really good. Mm -hmm. I hope not the final one. That was a really touching scene. It was. was and a very realistic scene. Yeah. It was very realistic, but very touching, you know, that they acknowledge where their friendship goes. And, and when Bronn says to Tyrion, when did you put your life on the line for me? And, and Tyrion, rather than, mm -hmm. than be petty about it, acknowledges it. You know, yeah. it's those guys, that friendship is honest with the way it's been portrayed all along. Totally. And... You know, yeah, it is kind of a guy getting paid by another guy, but it's still like there is an affection there, and I like the way that that scene played out. And it was very moving when they're shaking hands and Tyrion doesn't, doesn't want to let, let go, go right? and that's, that's kind of right because yeah. it's a real like the only people who he has he has like real connections to three people. Jamie, it turns out, which I didn't really get, but the, until this season that that was mm -hmm. a legitimate connection. He had it with Shay, and and he has it with Bronn, and Shay's been taken from him. And and, and bronze has been taken. And Bron's been taken from him, and Bron is Bought making this choice. Him. But Bron is making the proper choice. One, just because the odds are so incredibly right. low. Yeah. Two, because he did it once. Like you can't keep right. doing it. And he's right. We don't have an equal friendship. And now I've gotten to a place where, like you know, and and then you think Tyrion is saying, you know, you're a you know you're a gutless, heartless bastard. And then he goes, yeah, sorry about that. He's like, no, you're a gutless, <laughs> right. heartless bastard. That's why I like you. It's cool. Yeah. We're good. You know? well, and, and he's not a gutless, heartless, no, he's heartless not. bastard. He's not. Like, he, he obviously shows that he wishes he could help. But if, if this were other shows, he would go and try to help. And he might well die. But that's not realistic. Like, he's a great fighter. Right. But he doesn't think he can take them right. out. And the he shouldn't think that he can take it. The conversation is really that Braun isn't sure that he'd win. And even if he did win might not go well for him. Mm -hmm. And Tyrion is kind of knowingly signing off on that. Like, yeah, okay. Right, and there's but, nothing yeah. I can, right. you know. Maybe and, I'll get and, Winterfell. And maybe even I'll... if you do win, I don't know that I have anything to make it worth your while. Right, because yeah. you know? I'm still and, gonna be the the outsider. I'm still gonna be right. the son my father hates. You know, that's not, that right. doesn't the change. Right, the and the could be and the still might. Be there. And, yeah. Right, right, maybe I don't get banished to the wall, but everything's gonna be a pain in the ass. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, well, one quick thing I want to throw in, though. Uh, so I like that they they he's marrying Lawless Stokeworth, which is a character we haven't had in the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't conceive of this being any kind of spoiler, but leading up to this point in the books, she's been around the whole time in the capital, and she is this gigantic, dim-witted woman whose mother is trying to marry her off to basically every male character in the books at oh, one really? point or another. And uh, she has a pretty horrible life during the when is they're coming back Bronn from the in the books. Is that or is she engaged to Bronn in the books? Is that I, I think this is pretty much in line with what happened okay. in the books up, up until this right. point. Anyway, there's more of a little bit of a backstory to her. her. Yeah. yeah. So they, she's one of the characters they dropped because for pretty much yeah. for, for time, I'm yeah, sure. Really sure yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, it, it provides some comic relief. The the mother trying to get Tyrion to commit to marrying oh, so her and things like that. She's a big woman. Then I guess they made that clear. Yeah, she's, she's soft. soft and warm. Right, soft yeah. and warm. Which I think and, is a direct line from the book. And her and her sister is going to inherit something significant. Yeah, well, she the Lawless is the second sister. Right. right. So yeah, but right. Bron, and Bron will take care of that too. Bron will do a horse riding accident. Although again, I, you I don't, can't imagine him just randomly killing a woman. But I guess. Yeah, I guess you know he's a he's a sellsword. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's the way it goes. Now he has uh, a cape. 
Um, so that was great. That was a really good scene. And, uh, and then, of course, we had the, the yeah. one. The I mean, one. he's all dressed up. He does still look like a lowlife. Yeah, let's, he's got the face. <laughs> like, he, a little bit like Locke, the, the man you're in love with. <laughs> I'm not in love with him. I just thought he was unquestionably. But, but like, I've seen the pictures, and I, I may have been mistaken. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, but I assume you're transitioning over to the other. To Tyrion the other scene. Tyrion scene with, uh, uh, with Oberyn, uh, with Oberyn uh, which was really, <laughs> which we, we knew was coming, um, yeah. but it was great. Well, I think we, we suspected. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you, I guess because there's an episode coming up with that. Wasn't that what we learned it from? That, uh, that, that it's possible that, that, that I mean, we knew they were going to fight. Conceivably, they were going to fight. Right. That, once once yeah. it was suggested to us by Kim, yeah. it seemed very clear that that's, exactly. that that's what And yeah, we're with how much, I mean, Oberyn, I think, is one of the best character introductions yes, this great, season. Great, yeah. And everybody loves Tyrion. Getting both of them, if only you could have thrown in the Queen of Thorns, it would have been the best dialogue scene ever in the show. Uh, it was, uh, and the issue, though, the question that I guess some people have and that I now have, and we speculated a little bit last week, is did Tywin set this up? Did he know this might happen because, or... Because he did promise Oberon, I guess as you said or somebody said last week, that that he promised Oberon, I'll give you your shot at the mountain. Mm. Well, here it is. He just he's giving it to him. Like, so does Tywin going to be comfortable with this? Well, um, I mean, it depends although, on if you think she Cersei chose the mountain or if Tywin chose the mountain. Well, we believe it seems from, like a pretty good choice. And also, but from that looks of that, I, I think Cersei cho chose the mountain, which of course undermines that argument unless. Tywin knows that Cersei would choose that because that scene where Cersei goes to see him, there's no, she betrays nothing except glee yeah. that, that this guy is going to fight for. Well, but maybe, right, maybe Tywin <laughs> put it in her head. It's possible. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting, though, because in that last episode, the previous one, when Tywin agreed so quickly to what, right. what Jamie had thrown out there, that I think that was his plan. I think like, that was that his plan. Seems, so, so you this, know, he's so quickly, he's like, okay, done. Right. Yeah. Let's, all right. Let's go. Yeah. Right. And and to have Tyrion be the one to upset the apple cart there. Like I and, think and that as, was as Tyrion said, like seeing father's disappointment was right. pretty great. Like yeah. it was worth it. <laughs> Fucking dying might have been worth that moment. So yeah, I I, I I mean yes, I although it does it is interesting that or will Tyrion merely Tywin merely take advantage of the situation that he promised it now, or you know, or, or will there ever be a moment where Tywin says to Tyrion? You know, you're a chronic disappointment. Yes. Did you think for a second I was going to let my own son die for a crime he didn't commit? Mm. Like, maybe that's... Like, I was prepared to have you banished to the wall, and I can't stand the sight of you. But you're my flesh, you're yeah. my blood. I'm, I really wasn't going to let that happen. Hmm. That, that would, would be, be a side of him we haven't seen. That would be inconsistent with everything we've seen yeah. from time More likely well, if, if you include... If, if you at last, he would say something like, you're a Lannister. Uh, the story that Oberyn tells of when Tyrion was still an infant, that's rough to have to hear that. It's not that Cersei just grew to hate him, but to hear that she has hated you since you were a child, once again reminded that people think that you killed your mother by being born. And, and I think Dinklage yet again shows his, his depth as an Total. actor to, to you know, show what, make you believe that he's his reaction. That, hearing that for yeah. the first time. Yeah. Um, and a great way, it's just, and also just a, just a great, what a wonderfully written scene and a yeah. great story to have Oberon t and to turn these people who we see now, the greatest warrior in the Seven Kingdoms and Tyrion who we know so much about and is such an enormously complicated character and Cersei and Jaime who becomes more and more like a, a spectator in his own life, mm -hmm. reacting to what other people do and not really taking charge of his own life. But all these people, we know so much about them and then we instantly, they're reduced to uh, little children. Like, you know, and we don't even need to have seen that story to know what that's like, right. little kids hearing about this monster, and that, yeah. that could happen in any, almost any neighborhood today to some extent. Yeah. Um, and then his disappointment, like, no, he's, he's a kid, his head's big. Yeah. Like, right. what the fuck? Right. Yeah, it's a baby. Right, and um, the way that scene is written to, you know, the way that scene plays out to show that Tyrion is still capable of being hurt by his sister. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. right. At this point, like, <laughs> after all of this, after that's she's fun. maneuvered to, ha you know, she's want, yes, he's known that she wants him dead, but to still be shocked by it is kind of an amazing scene. Like, didn't she, even for a moment when I was a baby, love yeah. me, have yeah. a moment where, uh, yeah, and, and also, like, you learn something about Oberon there, too, is that he, um, like, he's a good guy. 
he's a stand-up guy. Like, I don't know, I don't think he'd kill an innocent. Like, you know, I, he didn't, you know, he, the guys he went after in that first scene, those were Lannisters. Mm -hmm. um, and who, he didn't it, kill him. He didn't kill him, and he's allowed to get revenge. They did horrible things to him and his family, and so he, like, you know, he gets it because his reaction to that was, what the fuck are you talking about? This is a little baby, and yeah. like, babies get protected. They don't get, right. they don't get mocked, and you don't pinch their penises. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, one of the great lines from the the preview trailer for the whole season was the, if you're looking for justice, you've come to the wrong place. Yeah, which was a great line, and then his response was even better. I've come to exactly, um, I've come to the right place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I loved his performance in that scene as well. Yeah, he's great. It's a great, uh, it's a great new character. Um, and then, uh, uh, and that, so Tyrion had, did he have just two or did he have three? He had three great conversations. He had Jamie, he had Braun, and he had uh, yeah. Oberon. So uh, he cannot not bring up that Jamie and Cersei have been fucking. No, it was great. So that's, <laughs> every time he has, you to. know, he's like, you know, your father will always love you. Your father will always cut you slack. He because Jamie's like, hey, father hates us both, and he's like, fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, father. He gave hates you a me. sword, right? Totally, and and he's like, you know, what are you talking about? You kill a king, you lose your head, you fuck your sister, and then <laughs> and then Jamie's like, oh. Easy now. Yeah. You don't have many friends left. Bob's leaving. Um, and then we were like, Bob can't handle this. I don't have anything. I don't have anything left to say. Like, yeah, that, that was, I, that, that, was, was it. that was it. You killed the king. You lost yeah. your head. You fucked your sister. Well, like, to be fair, you pushed the Stark boy out of the window. But. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> which he, which Bob, he was I'm the first to figure it out. out. Tyrion in prison is great. Those are, he's just had nothing but great, great scenes and great performances and. I don't know how the Emmys work. Or I don't know what year this counts as, or if we just had the Emmys or when they're coming. That he wins, like yeah. to me, like I don't know what he has already, right? I don't Game know. Thrones? It's the Emmys. Or nobody what? knows. Um, <laughs> it's a good point. No, well, he was at the very least nominated. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. so I think that. Uh, I don't but know. I mean, Do we get another shot for uh, Cranston? Does Cranston get a final but I mean, shot this year? Cranston is oh, awesome. Maybe. He's great. He's won. Like this is better. This is a special special performance. We had a good ending to this episode. We've got an exciting episode coming up. We're going to see the trial by combat, which a lot hangs in the balance and there. Some, and some, which is obviously the most interesting thing, but and some sort of trial for Baelish and what's his motivation, what's yeah. his other than blind power. I just, he's too calculating. He must have something specific, which you guys know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it seems like he would want something very, very specific, mm -hmm. and maybe it's maybe may, which may be the th the throne. Yeah, and and also uh, we 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 didn't cover the what happened at the wall, which is pretty much John oh. trying to get them to see oh. reason, very much like in Fargo, trying to get the police to investigate the crime. Let's talk before we go really briefly about that scene at the wall because you saw it contrast with this gifted leader who listens to reason and makes mm -hmm. thoughtful decisions, even after they've made a decision, even after the biggest thing that's seen is weakness in a leader. Like George Bush was, you make a decision, you stick to it. No, no, but it's the wrong decision, and we can change it, we can get out of it, <laughs> we can fix it, we can fix it, hold on, hold on. He's like, nope, made my, up, made my mind. And the clowns at the at Night's Watch, I mean, yeah. and they're just, they just want to make fun of him publicly. <laughs> oh, why don't you go hang up with your old right. friend Mance Raider? Because <laughs> he was with them, you know? And like, no, no. There are a hundred thousand people. He's saying yeah. to to block the tunnel, the tunnel, block the tunnel. <laughs> um, well, yeah, they're not what are they supposed to do the night's watch? He, he wants to fill it up with rocks and right. ice and then flood it, so it'll flood. be a, a, basically a big mind, flood of the, the tunnel. It'll what, be effectively a part of the wall at that. But point. one of the problems with the night's watch is, it's it's mostly right. staffed by losers. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's either criminals, or it's like second sons, or people that aren't going to inherit. Like. You don't have your best and brightest going to the wall. But you think the leaders would be like they. No, the, but but that's they, the thing. One they, of the guys on the yeah. council. One of those guys is the guy that Tyrion Jenna fired, Slint. Yeah. right? Jenna Slint. Like, oh, you're an asshole. Get yeah. out of here. But and like, those guys aren't supposed to be in control. I mean, we had right, right, Jorah Mormont, who would have possibly had a, su a successor, somebody else. And but again, we didn't just get so that. we know, the song, I remember that's Jorah's father, right? Yes. All right. So they, I mean, yeah. that's like that's a his smart. His father is his brother. No, it's his dad. That's a smart family. Like that's a good family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and if, if not for the slavery, they would be right. But even <laughs> like, but again, they recognize. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bad call. I was in the wrong business. Yeah. Um, but so foolish and so epically dumb, and you know, you just sort of get the feeling that John's going to save the day anyway. And our initial exposure to the Night's Watch, while well, you're correct, and you have to all season, you have to remind yourself that we were reminded by what happened at at uh, Krakow's farm. Let's, 
Craster's Key. Craster's Key. Craster's Key. Craster's. <laughs> um, I knew I was in trouble on that one. Um, but at Craster's, in at Craster's Keep. In, keep. in the crack house. Uh, in yes. The, in the crack house. Exactly. That, that like these guys were, these are bad dudes. Yeah. Right? Because our introduction to them were like John and his little group of five and it was all like wrongly accused, fun. shunned second son who's a really good yeah. guy. Uh, I it's stole. Not the merry men. We were hung. I was hungry, and I stole some bread. Like right. these were not. <laughs> these weren't evil doers. No, they're rapists and killers. Right, but right. the most of these guys are, are brutal, awful guys. Yeah. Char and given the most important task in the in the Seven Kingdoms, which right. nobody respects, but anymore. nobody respects it because they don't really believe what's out there. Yeah, and we and we can see in the preview, it looks like the wildlings are getting close. Yeah, I'm John. Maybe Biden. not in this episode coming up, but, but they're yeah. coming. There's coming. There's some. Right. There's there's, there's going to be a. a, a, a a, a trial by combat, and there's going to be a confrontation at the well, wall and, and before yeah. the and season's let's over. Let's not forget, it's not just the wildlings. There's also the walkers. Right, right, right. right. Which, which they, which nobody knows. I guess only only Sam really knows about, or he's told yeah. them. But he's nobody, told them, but they don't. But they don't believe him right. either. They're incompetent. Yeah. They deserve to die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, two weeks now, we get to Memorial Day off. Easy, buddy. Yeah, easy, but we easy. will be back. Uh, thanks, everybody. This is Bob. She won't be <laughs> thanks, back. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs>